You and I both understand the importance of reducing our body's aging and even reversing aging because this is the key to almost everything and anything in health. This is going to achieve us all of the benefits, including better skin, uh, protection from diseases, lower body fat, lower belly fat. So this is what we need to achieve. And to achieve this goal, you know that your nutrition is a major tool. What you eat today affects most of the longevity mechanisms and genes in your body. Unfortunately, most of the nutritional advice we hear has conflicts. Some people claim that we need to avoid meat altogether, and others say that we need everything in moderation, not to mention the myriad of superfoods that we supposed to integrate into our lifestyle, many of which supposed to increase our longevity. Very confusing and frustrating. You need clarity and specificality. Today, we'll see Dr. David Sinclair explain a study about different diets for longevity. And then, we'll analyze different foods, without agenda, with the aim to explain Dr. Sinclair findings, together with my 15 years of longevity research. In our food analysis, we'll see how different foods affect our major longevity pathway called mTOR. And also today, you'll discover how to eat steak and still keep mTOR low, simply by planning your meals for the day. If all that talk makes you hungry, it's gonna get much worse. Now, let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Riman. Let's start by listening to Dr. David Sinclair explaining a study analyzing different diets for longevity. What's interesting is that there was a really big study by the Adventist Health uh, Group, 2013. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that because what they calculated was the chance of dying based on various diets. And this, these were thousands of people. And what they found was that what's called the hazard ratio went down the more vegetarian and vegan you were. What does that mean? Your chance of dying goes down. And the number goes from zero to one. Whereas one it is you're pretty likely to die tomorrow. Whereas a low number, which is around 80, means you've got 20% less chance of dying on any given day with this hazard ratio. So the numbers are the following. Non-vegetarians are at one, if you call that one. Compared to that, uh, the next best one uh, was semi-vegetarians at 0.92 and octolovo or lacto-ovo vegetarians 0.91. Okay, so about a, almost a 10% reduction in mortality, death. And then you get into uh, vegans, which 0.85, so it's 15% reduction in death. And then the best one was pesco vegetarians. So getting a little bit a of little meat. A little bit of fish. Yeah, a little bit of meat from fish. Probably the, the fish oils in there are beneficial. And then you're down to 0.81. So that's a 19 percent reduction in your chance of death at any given day late in life. In essence, Dr. David Sinclair says that fish with vegetables is the number one ranking diet for longevity. But how is fish different from other animal products? And what makes vegetables unique? By understanding the reason for that, we can take your diet to the next level and also customize it to your taste buds. But first, we need to make sure that you have a strong base of understanding of mTOR. To make sure that we're on the same page here, and carrying the knowledge of longevity from the last video, let's go over what we've learned so far about eating protein for longevity. mTOR is a usefulness preservation mechanism in your body. When mTOR is high, it accelerates aging and growth. When mTOR is low, it increases recycling, usefulness preservation, and stifles growth. The nutrient that has the greatest impact on mTOR is how much protein you eat, and the value of protein that you eat every day matters the most. Eating once a week higher protein intake, especially in days of exercise with divided portion, is not going to hurt you. We are focusing on chronic high protein. Within your protein requirement, you don't want to eat too many essential amino acids in an arginine. Animal protein usually has more essential amino acids, and plant protein usually has more L-arginine. It's a non-essential but a strong stimulator for mTOR. To add to this list from what you're going to discover today, each food, not just animal-based or plant-based, has a different amino acid makeup and hence a different influence on mTOR and your longevity. And the fact that the food has more essential amino acid doesn't mean that you have to completely eliminate it from your diet. By paying attention to how many essential amino acids you ate for that day, you can eat any protein source without activating mTOR. And lastly, the quality of protein matters too to your longevity. This is another subject we're going to touch today.
The surest way to increase your longevity is to control a critical mechanism called mTOR. And this mechanism is very responsive to not only how much protein you eat, but to the amino acid profile of each food. Now, once you know how much protein to eat, you just need to create a lifestyle where you get the right amount of essential amino acids and avoid too many of them within your daily protein requirement. Of course, you want to overlap these foods with the food that you love and enjoy, so you want as many tasty foods options as possible. Together, you'll create your ideal longevity lifestyle, tasty and healthy. Let's talk about specific foods because I know that you're intelligent and practical, and as we delve together into longevity research, we want to zoom in into different types of foods that can make up your next longevity meal. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. These foods are high in essential amino acids. For my calculation, if you're going to eat up to 30 to 40% of your daily protein from these, that is very nourishing. Over that, it will activate mTOR. So foods with high amounts of essential amino acids in their protein are red meat, chicken or poultry, mutton, white meat, eggs. And I want to mention that the yolk part is highly nourishing and lower in protein than the whites. So you can make up your own mind about how much of each part you can eat. Whey protein and cheese. The following are foods that are moderate in essential amino acids. So you can actually eat about 60 to 70% of your total protein intake from them without activating TOR. These include fish and most seafood, although I need to do individual analysis in the future for each type of seafood. So I'm just giving you a generalized idea here. The idea that fish is a good protein for your longevity is well established. Not only that you nourish your body with a protein that doesn't activate mTOR very strongly uh, compared to other animal proteins, but you also nourish your body with omega-3, depending on the, the fish, of course. And omega-3 activates two mechanisms that control aging. If that interests you, I have an omega-3 guide in this channel. So fish is good for you, nourishing the body with essential amino acids and omega-3, but not too much to activate TOR. And that explains beautifully what Sinclair found and said that fish is an excellent protein source for longevity. Another interesting food group that I would like to touch is food with collagen. The two foods that include collagen are bone broth, bovine and chicken, and collagen powder. Collagen is an animal protein, but it is very low in essential amino acid. In addition, it's very low in L-arginine, and it's high in glycine that increases longevity. I did a full analysis of these two foods in my collagen video in this channel, so you can check the research on them and consider adding them as an anti-aging food to your diet. So far, we covered food groups with high and moderate amount of essential amino acids. The following foods are plant foods that are low in essential amino acids, but are higher in L-arginine, and some of them also high in carbs, which activate TOR as well. These are grains, and they also high in carbs, which activates mTOR, seeds, legumes. Legumes change a bit according to the type of legumes, but generally speaking, most of them are moderate to low in essential amino acids, but they are the highest in this group. And nuts. Generally speaking, nuts are great food. The best nuts that have the best composition to lower TOR are pecans and almonds, from my analysis. And indeed, here is a study from 2016 that shows that nuts consumption reduces death, which means it increases longevity. Let me quote, Nut consumption and risk of cardiovascular disease, total cancer, and all cause and cause specific mortality. This is the conclusion of the study. Higher nut intake is associated with reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, total cancer, and all-cause mortality, and mortality from respiratory disease, diabetes, and infections. In the study, they estimated that 4.4 million premature death in America, Europe, and Southeast Asia and Western Pacific would be attributable to nut intake. So if we could eat more nuts instead of other food, we could save many lives because of the impact on mTOR in other pathways as well. 
vegetables, low in carbs, which is a good combo. They do not activate Tor. What's good about them is that you don't extract much protein from them, but you also get a lot of micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals. And indeed, once I try to reach my protein requirement mostly with vegetables, or some of the time I replaced some protein sources with vegetables, and I noticed that I lost a good amount of muscle mass. So apparently some of the vegetables appear to have protein that my body could not extract from the vegetables. Under plant protein, there is a group I called healthy fats from plants. Specifically avocado, olives, and olive oil of course, and coconut oil. These foods have no protein or close to zero protein, which makes it easier to stick to a low protein diet. They also contain no carbs and have polyphenols. Specifically avocado and olives contain polyphenols, which is in the same group as resveratrol. So it could very well be that their polyphenols could have a synergetic effect when resveratrol supplements. Dr. David Sinclair says that he mixes his resveratrol in olive oil. Besides improving the absorption of resveratrol, you also get the polyphenol synergetic concoction. And I think we can also mix resveratrol in guacamole. So we said that the volume of protein matters the most, but what about the quality of food that you're eating? The quality of food matters. This study from 2012 analyzed data from over 1 million people. The study called Red and Processed Meats Consumption and the Risk of Incident Coronary Heart Disease. And this is what they found. Red meat intake was not associated with coronary heart disease or diabetes. Conversely, processed meat intake was associated with 42% higher risk of coronary heart disease and 19% higher risk of diabetes. Diabetes and heart disease are amongst the biggest killers in our society. So obviously, this study has directly to do with longevity. The main difference in quality is between processed meat and unprocessed meat for health and longevity. Processed food in general is not good for you, as you already know. And that applies also to plant protein. For example, buying vegan burger in a fast food restaurant is never going to be close as eating fresh, unprocessed plants. And I'm sure that if you're going to check that for longevity, you're going to see the same results. So when you have the choice between eating unprocessed foods to processed foods, then for your longevity, always choose the version that is unprocessed. How to eat steak and still keep mTOR low for the day. If you do love steak and you want to keep mTOR low, I want to give you an example of how you can refer to steak in your diet. So let's say that you need about 50 grams of protein every day. And today you exercise with a decent intensity, so you need to increase your baseline protein intake. This intense exercise also increases your essential amino acid intake, by the way, that's a different story. Let's say that you need to eat in total about 60 to 60 grams of protein for this day. So maybe at lunch or dinner, you have a four ounce piece of steak. This is going to have around 27 grams of protein. On this side, you can add baked bone marrow, for example, which hardly has protein, and maybe butter, also that has no protein, and you can add vegetables that have minimal effect, minimal impact on your protein intake. So together we are talking about maybe 30 grams of protein in total. So you have additional 35 grams for the rest of the day. However, we also need to touch the amino acid content of your meal. We also need to take into account the amount of essential amino acid that you consume. We don't want to overactivate mTOR. If you remember the guideline I show you today when I mentioned the food groups, the foods with a lot of essential amino acids, you only want to get somewhere between 40 to 30% of your uh, food intake from them for that day. At this point, I would like to limit any animal protein for the day. I don't want to get ex excess essential amino acids. Of course, you can still eat collagen protein. So practically the 30 grams of protein, 25 to 30 grams of protein that are left for you for the day, they should come from low amino acid groups, such as nuts, for example, until you reach your 60 to 60 grams of protein intake for that day.
let's be honest here. This protein limitation isn't easy to anybody, including me. And in 2011, I really began to control my protein intake. And it really was a headache. And over the years, I found simple things that helped me and my clients to keep my protein intake low without too much hassle. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you the six best ways that gonna make the journey of a low protein intake much easy to do. Of course, the video is gonna be free in the Wellness Messiah channel here on YouTube. I hope this video about mTOR and protein was helpful for you. Did you have any insights from today's video? If so, considering supporting this practical longevity research with Patreon with $1 contribution. But subscribing for free is also a huge help. Thank you and have a healthy day low in mTOR and high in longevity.